Explorers. I should have brought my shades because I'm recording from outside here on a balcony. And today I'm going to record a vlog about lessons learned while I'm in Cuba. So I have a list if you see me looking down. It's on my list of reminders of what I wanted to share of what I learned about my travel to Cuba. First off, um, we flew out of Fort Lauderdale on Southwest Airlines. I love Southwest, don't get me wrong. But right now, um, late 2016, early 2017, the process was not really thorough or organized. It was a little chaotic. So I definitely allowed time to get through this process. I bought my visa in advance had it in hand, but I still had to go stand in line with Cuba Visa Services to um, get it stamped. I didn't know that. That was a pretty slow line. Then you have to stand in a separate line just to check in for Cuba, as they will ask you for what purpose you're, you're traveling there. Uh, as I mentioned before, there's currently 12 reasons why you can fly to Cuba. Um, and so you have to answer those questions and it was a whole separate check-in from Southwest regular check-in on a different level. You have ticketing on one level and the Cuba check-in is in baggage claim. So it's a lot of uncertainty and confusion when it comes to this process. So if you do not have a long enough time to check in there, you could cause yourself to miss your flight or panic or rush or whatever it may be. Um, second thing, we had heard this from several people, and I've heard stories, the stories of arrival up on Cuba, but I would suggest not checking your bag. Carry your bag on the plane. All of us carried on, except for one, she was in the last boarding zone for the Southwest, so you know what that means. Your bag has to get checked. It took her maybe an hour and a half of waiting to get her bag and there were still people getting waiting for their bags after we left like half the flight so to ease that <laughs> pain and stress be sure to carry your bag on flight um, third make sure you research tour guides and make sure you have a reputable one, reputable one. Um, that actually knows his history, knows the, the ways around Cuba. Um, we had a guy who um, we didn't use for our actual historical tours. There were some other people um, that we were around who had this guy. He, did, he was from there, <laughs> but he did not have the history and details and organization um, as someone who's actually experienced in the guiding field. So you wanna make sure you have someone who's giving you that thorough um, review of the country while you're there. You want, if that's what you're going for, obviously there's other reasons why you can go, but make sure you research that um, before heading there. Um, and we use for our educational tour, for tours, and I'll include a link in the, the comment section of this video blog. Um, fourth, you can bring back um, cigars and rum from Cuba as souvenirs. And obviously cigars is something that Cuba is known for, right? So that was one of our souvenirs that we just had to have. Um, be sure to research in advance to make sure you know what a real Cuban cigar looks like to make sure you're getting the best value for your money. Obviously, there can be fakes in Cuba, right? Even though it is from Cuba, it may not be the legitimate Cuban cigar that you're looking for. Make sure you're not overpaying for it and make sure you're getting it from the right place. So do all of that research in advance. Um, as for us, um, we went through one of our um, connections who she was able to get us our Cuban cigars. mentioned this in my Cuba prep video um, to exchange your money to euros if you're coming from the U.S. before going to Cuba as you will be penalized 10% taking USD. Um, so 
be sure to exchange your money once you arrive in Cuba. It's not really easy to find uh, money exchange places um, while walking around Cuba. We did find a bank um, in Old Havana that did exchange foreign currency and I will post the name. Actually, I could pop up a picture right now, right? Um, so this is the place that we went to to exchange our money. Um, they accepted the euros. They did use the most current foreign exchange rate. Um, but yeah, make sure you exchange it right when you get to the airport so you don't have to worry about it. Um, hopefully you have enough so you don't have to worry about scrounging around for money later on in your trip. That's a worry you don't want to have. So make sure you take enough. It's recommended to take about $100 a day uh, while you're there. Um, but yeah, if you want, if you're there over the weekend, be sure to exchange your money before, especially before Sunday or before it closes, because you may not be able to find a place. Um, some of the hotels will exchange money, but you must be a guest there. So if you don't know anyone at the hotel, that could be a problem. Um, if they're not lenient on, you know, just foreigners exchanging money there. Next point is taxis. There's a variety of taxi choices. There's your, you know, official, or what you think is official, yellow taxi cabs. There's other taxis that are in like the old American cars. There's other taxis that are just in plain old poor cars, like just poor shape. And then there's these little and old van. I don't know what they're called. I guess I could post a picture or maybe look up the name here. But they're kind of, they remind me of tuk-tuks in Thailand. They're really small little scooters, maybe about two or three people, depending on size, could fit in the little back part. Um, but yeah, they have a variety of options. Avoid the poor condition taxis. Um, those taxis scared our lives. Um, there was one taxi, he was such a terrible driver, he was driving so crazy and then his stick shift came out um he had to use his hand to stop the vehicle so that's that's very scary um so avoid that by not taking one of those taxis but those are usually cheaper taxis and the little taxis that look like tuk-tuks those are cheaper as well um so just do your negotiation know your distance um and be mindful that a lot of the cars in cuba are, are old and in very poor condition so they're going to have to charge higher rates sometimes based on the location but you still want to get the most for your money don't get screwed over on taxi fees because that could happen as anywhere you go you could get screwed over taxi fees um, dinner reservations um we didn't really have to worry about reservations for the most part um, because we cooked at the our Airbnb one day, we, you know, had food already prepared, you know, there was a place right around the corner from us where she had a restaurant, she opened up her home to us for New Year's Eve, that was a great experience, but our last night there we had to worry about dinner in a lot of places in Cuba, they're very small um, and they fill up quickly, so you need to have reservations even if it's for a small group of two or three people. Um, so you don't have to worry about that stress. And lastly, the biggest thing I learned is that Cuban people are extremely nice. I've never met such friendly people. A woman had opened her home up to us. There were several people who helped us find taxis. There's a, there was a guy at Bell Hop, one of the hotels that helped us several times with taxis trying to find money. The police are friendly. Just anyone you meet on the street, very friendly environment. Some of the most friendliest people I've ever met in all of my travels. Um, hopefully things don't change here with legislation in the U.S. of traveling to Cuba. So keep up to date on U.S. foreign affairs and our laws and restrictions upon traveling to Cuba or to any, well, anywhere else around the world. Thank you.